Okay, I've lifted the car and taken off the passenger side tire. And now we're going to take off this cover here, uh, two bolts and a clip that holds it. And when we get that removed, we'll have the we'll have access to the crank pulley and we'll be able to get the rest of the bottom bolts of that top cover off and then the bottom cover off. And then we'll be able to get all those covers off and get to that water pump and everything. And as you can see, when I took off that thermostat, it made a huge mess under the car. Like I said, it's a little tough to get there. All right, guys, before removing the belt for the water for the power steering, keep it on and then undo the bolt because the friction from that belt will hold the pulley from spinning air impact and you set it at the highest setting um, you will get this off and it may take a couple of tries but make sure the compressor is full every time if it's half full and not at the highest setting it may not be able to get it off but I was able to get this nut off by just um, hitting it with that thing from the power steering off next then I'll use a puller to pull that uh, harmonic balancer off all right now I took the bracket off and then it's just as simple as just moving that up and then you will loosen up the belt and then you can get that belt out of the way so you can get the cover off all right okay guys it's good to always have a gear puller, bolt uh, puller set, and it's just working really well. I didn't want to push them, push my luck and get them threaded all the way in just to capture. But you, as you can see, it's easy to do just by hand. So I'll be able to get that damper off. Okay guys, the damper is off. Always inspect it for any cracks in the rubber, any issues these there was a recall on these at one time and I had the recall done and you could see there's the timing mark on it and the shaft looks good I had the Toyota dealer do the recall of course and uh, now we can get to all these bolts for that lower cover all right guys here's a good sign there's no oil in the lower cover there's only just belt material. This oil here is just uh, road grime that got into um, into the uh, cover a little bit. You can see here too, there's nothing from the top cams. Um, I am not seeing any oil on the belt at all. The belt looks really good. Uh, I'm surprised because this is a 10-year, 100,000-mile belt. This was a Gates belt again that I replaced. Uh, it was made in the USA. Um, I will be changing it with the OE stuff, so my kit includes all the bearings. So not, next I have to rotate the engine till the timing marks line up. You could see before I did line up the marks and paint it. Um, so I'll be rotating this belt till the uh, timing marks line up, bottom and those two cams. So what I'll do is put the pulley nut back in, or bolt, pulley bolt back in and do that. Uh, otherwise it's looking good. I'll double, I'll make sure I check the cam seals again. Even though this has 200,000 miles, I've been running synthetic and I change it every 6,000 miles and I do run highway miles. Um, it keeps the seals good. I have not used any high mileage uh, oil. That is something that if you do once you should just keep uh, changing. Just line up the marks and then we'll go from there. Alright guys, now you can see timing marks are lined up on this cam. And then this cam, it's hard to see from here, but they are lined up. Also, if we go down here, you can see that dot is in line with 
the mark above it on the crank. All right, guys, I was able to get this plate out. I had an issue where it came out of the block and the nut was not coming loose. And then this bolt does not come out, so I didn't spend time taking that out. Then, thankfully, I had the tool to take this bolt out. You can see the end of it is a little different. You need to use a special uh, socket for that. Um, it's, I think, an 8 millimeter. So uh, when you work on Toyotas, you definitely need to buy these special sockets. Um, but anyways, I was able to get it out once I got this bolt loose. So hope that helps. And then it just came right out. All right. Okay, when you take off the uh, tensioner, make sure that uh, washer is behind it otherwise it's going to bind and not actuate properly all right okay now we removed the three bolts and three nuts for the water pump and see as soon as you move it all that water all that coolant comes out so it's always good to have a bucket now it's captured by this cover so you're going to have to release this 10 millimeter bolt to just get enough room, maybe that one as well, uh, to get enough room to move, wiggle this water pump out. Uh, this cover will move uh, slightly to be able to allow you to do that. Alright guys, I did end up cleaning that area. I did suck up quite a bit by uh, hooking this uh, brake bleeder kit to my uh, compressor I was still able to get about an eighth of a quart of fluid out of all the crevices then I just uh, used some brake parts cleaner and wiped everything down and um, you can see it's fairly clean down there it looks a little wet still because um, I did just finish that and I'll wait for it to dry a little bit then I'll put the gasket on and start buttoning everything back up